So back to work on the Bronco. Did get the quarter panels and this one right here. This is the passenger side one, the front one. And it's damaged, not very much, but there is a little dent in it and it's bent just a smidge on the back. Kind of right in this area, there's a dent here. Actually, it looks like it's from the inside, more of a bump. And in about the same spot, it folds back just a little bit. Got these from LMC Truck and been in contact with them. Took some pictures, sent them in, described what was wrong, etc. And we'll see what comes out of it. Also got the new rockers down here. They're from LMC as well. And working on the doors. I was, I just got this one off of the passenger side. And as you can tell, this needs replaced rather badly. I was looking at the bottom of these doors and I think I can save them. There's just a couple little spots about inch maybe two inches long on each door that there's a little bit of rust on them i'll show you here on the passenger door and jesse found her spot again didn't you jess anyway over here on this door the only place on this one that was bad is right in here i think that's the worst one maybe i don't really need this light i just can't tell on my viewfinder very good but uh I took a sanding disc to this one, and I think with just a little more work, that's gonna be fine. And I think the same over here. I know the this lip right here, it folds around to the outside, and it looks good. It looks like it's good metal, except maybe right up on top there, but I still think I can get down to good metal. And then I think maybe what I'll do is coat that seam all along the bottom there, with some of that POR 15 and then put some seam sealer on it and uh, paint it up. I think it'll be good. I think the way it is right now, I think it would still probably be several years until you saw it on the outside of the truck anyway. So I think we're gonna just keep these doors and keep these mirrors. I was talking with my wife about it the other night and I think she prefers these mirrors over the ones that are like on my truck. But if we are, well, we don't have to keep these mirrors. I could, I could take these off and then patch all this up down here. And I think the other mirrors would just mount right up here. So we'll have to discuss that just a little bit more. I was just thinking before I started recording, that's kind of rusty right there. But if we're gonna be blacking these out anyway, should be able to sand that down and smooth it out. And uh, that should be fine. Getting a little rusty crusty up in there too. Let's see what this is really. Yeah, I think you could uh, sand that down, seal it with something, and paint it black or powder coated or something. I think it'll be fine. These doors are in pretty decent shape. They're not all beat up or anything. This one was catching on the fender, but I think it's, I don't think it's all dented up. At any rate, as of right now, I'm, I'm thinking I can save these doors. One thing I couldn't save, however, was this harness. This thing was a mess to begin with. Had wires spliced together and it, just a mess. That right there, there's some other wires on here that are, I thought they were all, you know, there's some more bare spots. Uh, let's see, there are more. Looks like it got pulled through the door at one time, not very carefully, and those wires got stripped. And maybe that explains why the window seems to sometimes on and go up and down, sometimes doesn't, uh, has a mind of its own. So anyway, I got this off, and to be totally honest with you, I'm not sure the best way to get these doors off with that harness through there. I'm thinking there's a connection back in here if you take this metal plate off, which which that metal plate houses your emergency brake, all of this setup. There's like there's a bunch of bolts that have to come out back there. 
There's one here, there's one up behind there, and some smaller ones up on top. And I know when I did my, my green truck, this is how I did it. I pulled this right through, right through that hole of the door. And you can get it through there if you're real careful. In fact, with my green truck, I didn't remember taking these switches off. These switches um, go into that, they fit into here. So if you do take this apart, you might want to take a picture of how they go. But basically they just snap down into there. I'm going to do the other side, but I'm going to see if I can get to a connection back behind that kick panel over there. Might make it a little easier. Because we still need to get the doors off of here. Need to get them off of here so we can do this rocker panel. Also need to get them off of here so we can paint the inside of them. Then, once I get the doors off, we're going to get to work on these rocker panels. And uh, this one isn't too bad. I mean, it is. It is, but it isn't. It seems to be pretty solid in most, most places. However, over here on the driver's side, as you saw just a second ago, this one is not in too good a shape. There's nothing to, nothing for the trim to even hang on to, and if I stood on that, it would probably just go to the ground. So this one, the whole thing is getting replaced on this, and probably, I know the lighting isn't very good. Yeah, there's, there's part of the floor that's gonna have to be re replaced. There's a big chunk of the floor that's going to have to be replaced. In fact, maybe with the money I was going to spend on doors, maybe I'll buy the actual floor panels. So when I remove these doors, this is how I do it. I put a floor jack under it, put two by four along the bottom so all the pressure isn't in one spot. Not that they're that heavy, really. And behind this kick panel in here, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see very good. But the two plugs that need unplugged that go up to the door is this gray one right here. Right here. And I believe this green one. This green one has a bunch of wires there that go up into the door. And then this gray one unplug it and it goes and ties into the same harness so get those unplugged should be able to pull a door off and feed those through that hole be a lot easier than what i did on the other side don't have to take the door panel off or anything you can just feed it right through right through that hole just gotta pop that out with a screwdriver <laughs> So I got a couple of bolts out of the door and I kind of decided it might just be easier to take this panel off with it in the truck rather than having the door sitting somewhere trying to take the panel. I thought it would be easier so I'm taking the panel off. Now, should be able to pull these wires out of here, I hope. Let's back this up just a smidge. Okay, so we got both doors pulled off of this thing, and I think they are saveable. So that uh, that's going to work out good. Now I'm probably just going to get in here and remove these, which aren't held in very good. Take the weather stripping off, which I think we're going to be replacing that. It's pretty deformed down here, and the other side's worse. Get in here, pull the carpet back a little bit, and see what we're looking at as far as the floor goes. 
So I've been doing a little work on the Bronco Yaz the next day. And I've got quite a bit torn apart here. Here's the weather stripping off both the doors. Doors off, weather stripping off, which to take the weather stripping off, had to take all of the interior, all the, all the panel pieces off that run up the sides and around the door and everywhere and down all along the inside here. I'll get in the back and show you. Okay, so here in the back, a little more rot than, uh, than first expected. And right now it probably looks worse than it really is because there are like stains and stuff down in here. In fact, I think some of that is glue actually. Yeah, that's not rust, that's glue. But there is some rust like right up there. And I've shown this before, we got rust down here that needs fixed. This whole panel, this whole piece right in through here probably needs fixed. I think on up there it's okay, but back in here, uh, I think that needs fixed. There's a hole right there that needs patched up. And the same on this side over here. All along the bottom here is okay. And same thing over there. There's a hole up in there that needs fixed. Not sure how solid that is right there. Go up here in the front. I know there's one place on that inner wheel well that uh, right there, I can poke a screwdriver right through that, I think. I can't tell where to hold this light. George, you're, you're getting in the way. Yeah. But move your tail. Right there, I can poke a screwdriver um, right through that if I want to. So that's going to need to fix. That's not a big deal. The places that are going to be a problem, well, not really a problem, I can fix it, but, but are down here in front of where the rear seat was. This drops down about six inches or so. And on both corners, over on that side and over here, um, hold my light they're all rotted out down in there and that is going to need replaced I can't hold a light and this carpet back very good the floor really is in pretty good shape it's just over here in this corner and the corner on the other side that's going to need attention and like I've said before, these rocker panels, they're getting replaced. This one, there's spots in it that I think are probably okay, but I've got two whole new rocker panels sitting right up there. And going to replace both of these. The floor, hopefully you can see this, the floor on the passenger side is, it looks to be pretty intact. And right there is a lucky penny better hold on to that but the floor seems to be okay over here clear out to the rocker panel so I think we're good over here however over here on the driver's side not so lucky this side is shot I don't have my light but same thing back here in this corner and this floor over here maybe I need a light I don't know what you can see and what you can't it doesn't show up very good on my viewfinder um, this floor, not in very good shape, goes to about halfway on the, this panel over here. This is just totally rusted out and needs replaced. Probably going to have to get a whole new floor pan for this side over here, along with the outer floor pan. It's just, it's just gone. So there's a little more work there to be done than I first thought, especially in the back. I knew the driver's side was in bad shape. Didn't know it was in quite that bad a shape, but if you're going to do a little bit, doing a little bit more isn't really all that much more work. I was just going to patch it in, but I think a new floor pan on the driver's side is probably called for. All of this all up along here, that's in real good shape, so that's not a problem. Just the floors in the back which could be a heck of a lot worse. Tailgate's in good shape. Really, it's these corners that are gonna be 
the biggest issue and that's really not that big a deal a patch or two up in here that's pretty easy to do and the rest of the floor under here looks really good there's there's no rust or anything under here that right there is actually i believe the build sheet can't pull it up it's just going to tear apart if i do um it looks kind of rusty but that's not a rust spot it's just uh just old i don't know if you heard it or not but i just got an alert that someone just bought a channel sticker not going to say his full name because I don't know if he would want that said on the channel, but David H. just bought a channel sticker. And if you would like to get a channel sticker of your own or a hoodie, t-shirt, zipper hoodie, any of those things, that link is down in the description. So yeah, we tore all the carpet out, got the rear seat out. Carpet's not going to be reused. It's not in very good shape and the wife doesn't want carpet back here. She would much rather have this be a rubber type of floor, maybe bed liner or something like that. So once I get the repairs made, probably be spraying in something back here. I'm not, I'm not real sure what yet. Might be bed liner, might be some kind of a rubber coating of some kind. Do a little research on that and see what I come up with. Did have one issue and I posted it up on Ford Bronco Alliance, a Facebook group that I'm a member of. When you remove the top on a Bronco of this year, the seat belts actually attach up to the top. And I was wondering, what do you do about seat belts when they attach to the top and you take the top off? It's my understanding here in Iowa, and I think other states as well, that if you're over the age of 18, it's not a law that you have to wear the seat belt in the rear seat. However, my youngest daughter isn't 18, and I'm sure she would really enjoy riding in the back seat. So I would like to figure something out. Some people have mentioned you can put a roll cage in the back of these. Some type of a roll cage that basically runs along the back of the Bronco. And the wife wants to put a soft top on this anyway in the summertime, or be able to at least. And to do that, you would need something back there. But they're saying you could put a roll cage back here and it has places in there to mount the seat belts to and that's one way you can take care of that other people say that you can put like a suburban back seat in or something like that has the seat belts incorporated into the seat not real crazy about that idea but if it's an option really if anybody's going to be riding in the back seat with the top off some kind of a, a roll cage back here is probably the way to go not real concerned with that at the moment, but it is something that crossed my mind. I left the brackets for the door hinges on. I just left them on right where they were. Thought that is probably a good spot for alignment. Being that I'm gonna have the front fenders off, the doors off, quarter panels off. I need some spot to align everything. This might be a headache. And it doesn't look like these have ever been touched. So I thought I'm just gonna leave these right where they are and then I'll just paint everything where it sits and get doors mounted on. One thing I may do is get new pins for these hinges. I think they're okay, but they don't cost a whole lot and I may replace those just so the doors are good and solid. I know that over here on the driver's side, this door just would not shut properly and I'm not exactly sure why and I don't know, nothing feels loose over here. Well, okay, that one's loose. So that one, I think that one needs replaced. But that's the only one that seems to be loose. The ones on the passenger side, that door shut nice. Needed a little adjustment to move it out just a, just a smidge, but uh, seemed to be okay. One other thing I mentioned that I was going to be replacing the AC condenser on this because it's not in very good shape. And I said I was going to order one, I think it was in my last video. And that's not going to happen right now. Front end on this isn't going to be going back on anytime soon. And being that I'm not a rich fella, I think right now that money probably could be spent on, well, the other side getting the floor pan for the driver's side 
and doing that kind of stuff instead of getting an AC condenser that really isn't needed at the present time. I will be getting a new one and putting it on, just not right now. Also want to mention the license plate wall. Let's get this filled out over here. If you have a license plate or anything else that you want to send to the Fox shop, the address is down below. So I think that's going to do it for this video. George is looking a little tired. It takes a lot of time to get all this stuff apart, especially on a vehicle that's 25 years old and a lot of this stuff has never been taken off takes a lot of time. May not seem like it in the video, time consuming. So give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Rock it and a roll it and a roll it